Meseches Nedarim Dafches contains a number of small sugis, a number of very small statements and halachos. We can break them up into two categories. First, we'll have three statements of Rav Gidol in the name of Rav. These are brought because in the end of the last half, we had halacha quoted by Rav Gidol in the name of Rav about Cherim. So the Gemara is going to quote three more unrelated statements of Rav Gidol in the name of Rav. Then the Gemara will go back to the halachas of Cherim and give us a few more statements and halachas about Cherim. Towards the end, we'll talk a little bit about taking the name of Shemayim, Livatullah, which we had just mentioned earlier. So the Gemara begins the first of three things of Rav Gidol in the name of Rav. On this staff, Rav Gidol in the name of Rav says that someone is allowed to swear to keep a mitzvah. The Gemara asks, why is he allowed to do that? We have a halacha ain't shua chal al shua. A person cannot make a shua to do something that he is already sworn to do. One on top of the other doesn't work, it doesn't catch. And you know that a person is sworn to keep the Torah at Harsina. We all swore to keep the Torah. So any mitzvah he has to do anyway, he shouldn't be able to swear to do. So when he says that's true, it's not what Rav Gidl meant. The Shvua does not take effect. All we're trying to say is that he's allowed to swear and it's not considered to be taking Shem Shemayim Levatoa. And the reason that he's doing it is in order to encourage himself to hasten himself to keep the mitzvah fully and completely and soon. Next, the Gemara calls of the name of Rav says something very similar. He says that somebody who makes a shvua to learn a perik or a mishnah or a mesechta, he has made a neder to Hashem like Yisrael. Again, sounds like he's saying that's a valid uh, oath. So Gemara asks, well, "What do you mean? He's already sworn to learn Torah on Harsinai. It's one of the mitzvahs." So Gemara says, "Maybe the chiddush here is to say, like we said before, that he's just trying to encourage himself to actually do it." And we don't mean that it's a real shul. Gemara says that can be because we already saw that from the previous statement of Rav in the name of Rav. So what then is he saying? So Gemara says, "No, what he's saying is as follows: Here, this shul does count, and the reason is because to learn a parak or a mishnah, one is not sworn to do. One is sworn to learn Torah every day. One can be mekayim that mitzvah by saying for Yishma." in Shachris and in Mayrif. And therefore, he's not obligated because of Hashulon HaSinai to learn more than that. If he therefore swears to learn more than that, that is not a Shvua Chal Al Shvua. And therefore, it does count. It is Chal, and that's what Rav Gidol is it's teaching us. Now, the third statement of Rav Gidol named Rav is that somebody who says to his friend, let's get up and meet and learn a parak together, he has to make sure that he's there first. He has to come before the other one. And you learn that from the Pasuk in Sefer Yecheskel, where Kaj Baruch Hu made up to meet with Yecheskel, and he was there before Yecheskel. The Mark quotes the Pasuk, where he says, The so Hashem called Yechazkel to come meet with him. He said, I'll speak to you there. And Hashem's kavod, ki'ilu, as it were, was there first before him. So therefore, you see, you have to make sure to be there first. Now the Gemara quotes a number of statements about Nidoy about Cherem, someone who is excommunicated. So the Gemara quotes of Yosef who says, if somebody is put into Cherem in a dream, that is, he dreamed that someone or a group of people put him into Cherem, he should view this as if he was sent a message from Shemayim that Shemayim put him into Cherem, and the only way to take off that Cherem is to have a group of ten people take it off, because there's always Shekhinah on a minion, so he needs to get a minion together, and that minion should be Matir him, and then that will be as if the Shekhinah was Matir him. Now, it can't just be any minion, the Gemara says, you should try to get a Meaning of people who were Tanu Hilchosa. Pachak is showing them what that means. Either it means that they learn Gemara or it means that they teach Gemara. We should not get people that were only Masnu, that is Tanu. Uh, Masnu Velod Tanu, the Gemara, again, the Rishonim say either that means that they only learn Mishnah, but not Gemara, or the second shot would be that they only learn Gemara and never actually taught any Gemara. Now, says Gemara, if he can't find such people, then he can, if he can't find people who were, um, Masnu, who are Tanu, that means, again, either that they learn Gemara or that they taught Gemara, depending which plot we go with, then they can take the lower level, someone who learned Mishnah or who learned Gemara. Going to, again, the two explanations, if he can't find even that, then he should stand at the crossroads and say Shalom Aleichem to everybody who passes by, and they'll say Shalom to him as well, until he has had 10 Talmud Chachamim who count on this level, or the count on the level of Masnu, then uh, that to count on the level of Tenu, 
and they should they will say shalom to him in return and having those people say shalom to him will protect him and it seems like it'll work to counteract the effects of the cherim that he may have now the Gemara asks what happens if he was put into cherim in this dream by someone who's alive who he knows someone who he could actually approach so Ravin asked Raf, could he go to that person and ask him to take the cherim off because we know generally whoever puts a person into cherim has the power to take the person out of cherim so the Gemara answer is not necessarily does he have the power to take the person out of cherim he may have been made a messenger from Shemayim to put him into Cherem, but that does not mean that he's made a messenger from Shemayim to take him out of Cherem. That person didn't put him into Cherem, that person was just a messenger. You don't know if he was given the power to remove it as well. Now, Rav Acha asked Rav Ashi, what happens if in his same dream he was put into Cherem and taken out of Cherem? Does he need to worry about that, or can he assume he was taken out of Cherem? Mara says, just like there's no grain without straw there's no dream without nonsense and the part where he was taken out of here may have been the nonsense and therefore he should not assume that he was taken out of here now the more coincidence incident which is not clear what it's doing here the more says that ravino's wife made a Neder, Ravina was apparently not around to be made for it, or he missed the time or he didn't hear it, and he wanted to take the nether off, so he didn't do it himself. It came to Ravashi, and he said, can a husband represent his wife to indicate regret? The way to take a nether off is to show that one regrets it and find a way in which he in which the one who made the nether can show that he or she would not have made the nether had they known something. Question here is, can the husband do that on behalf of his wife? And the Gemara says that you see from here that Ravina went ahead to Ravashi and asked, can I do this? on behalf of my wife, and Ravashi said, it depends. If you have to gather the judges together, no, because then you're doing the work and you're going to come up with extra things that don't accurately represent your wife's regret. If, however, you find judges already gathered, then you can then you are allowed to go and just speak for your wife. So as you from the story, we learned three halachos. First of all, halacha a husband could be made a shliach to, to represent his wife to the court to express regret. Again, as long as the circumstances count as to what was said by Ravashi. Second of all, we see that a person should not take off Nidarim if his Rebbe is in town. Again, that's because Ravina could have been Matir, his wife's not there himself. He was a Chacham on his own right, but he didn't. He went to Ravashi instead. Pasha's just because Ravashi was his Rebbe, and therefore he should have deferred to Ravashi to be able to do that. And the third halacha is like Ravashi said, that you are allowed to gather the judges together and have them take it off again, though you can't have you represent your wife in a situation like that. Gemara notes a related halacha. The Gemara says that a cherim can be taken off by an expert, even if his rebbe is around, and even just a single individual, as long as he's an expert, can take a cherim off. Now the Gemara returns briefly to the topic of taking Shem Shemayim Levatala, which we mentioned on the last half, and the Gemara quotes a bit of a gadata on the subject. The Gemara has a statement here quoted by nine people, a chain of nine people, one in the name of the other. This is Rav Shimon, Bar Zvidim, Rav Yitzchak, Bar Tavl, the name of Chia Aricha, from the Yeshiva of Rav Acha, the name of Rav Yizera, the name of Rav Lazar, the name of Rav Yichanina, the name of Rav Miasha, the name of Rav Yehuda Bar Eloi. And this is going to explain two psukim in Sefer Malachi. So the Gemara quotes the passage it says, for those who fear my name, a charitable and healing sun will arise and shine. So what does that mean? People that are afraid to take Shem Shemayim Levatala will have a special healing sun. It says by based on that, you see that a bright sun has healing powers. And says that Rish Lakish disagrees with that. He says that's only in the future and the world to come where the sun will have healing powers, but in this world it does not. Where do you see that? It's Marcos Rish Lakish who says that that in the future, there's not going to be Gehenim, there won't be a place of punishment. All that's going to happen is, is HaKadosh Baruch will take the sun out of its covering, and that will heal the tzaddikim, and that will judge, that is, it will punish the wicked. And you see that from the Pesach, it says, what we just quoted, V'zarcha l'chem yirei shemi shemesh tzedakah u'marpe. Not only that, says Rish Lakish further, but they will actually cause pleasure to the tzaddikim, as the rest of the Pasuk says, V'yitzasem ufishtem ke'egli marbek, you'll go out and you will enjoy like the fattened calves.